and um and that's when I brought up the um our free medical clinic and um and not to worry. I didn't care about anything other than helping her and her baby. Yeah. And at that point she told there was a translator there, told the translator, I don't have papers. Yeah. And he, which he told me, and I said, we don't care. Yeah. We, we don't care. We yeah. just want to help you and your baby. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. Send me, Lord. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. Welcome to the Gospel Center Pro Life Podcast, a podcast designed to equip encourage and challenge you in pro-life ministry and always with a focus on the gospel stay tuned i felt your passion I've touched your heart use me lord use me lord welcome back to the gospel centered pro-life podcast appreciate you guys joining us my name is daniel parks and i serve as the sidewalk coordinator for love life actually that's not my role my role is sidewalk director. It's hard to remember these things, Daniel. You I do know. so many good things. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, so I oversee all of our sidewalk ministry nas- nationally, and also I am the West Coast Regional Shepherd, so I oversee all of our Love Life teams that are on the West Coast from the Rockies West. And I'm joined, as always, by Vicki Cassiorg. Hey, and everyone. Yourself. Hey, I am the sidewalk training director yep. nationally, and then locally, I'm I'm here helping to coordinate the sidewalk volunteers and yes. what's happening here on the Charlotte sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. And together, we have a combined twenty something years experience. Mm-hmm. I'm really just making a lot of mistakes, and we do these podcast episodes to help you guys learn from our mistakes. You don't have to make mistakes of your own. Although we do everyone do, we makes do some mistakes. things right. We do but, do yeah. some things right. <laughs> From time to time. <laughs> That's why you're listening to us, because sometimes we hit on the right yeah, thing. <laughs> hit it right from time to time. But um, we do want to hear feedback from you guys, and so I would encourage you guys. We're going to give you our email addresses at the end of this episode. I would encourage you to reach out to us. Give us some feedback on what you think of this episode, what you think about the new format. Actually, we're going to be trying a new format this time where we're going to be sharing a story from the sidewalk in one of our cities. Love Life is in cities. We have cities all across the United States of America Mm -hmm. now from the East Coast to the West Coast and a lot of cool stuff happening on the sidewalks. And so we're really going to just uh, kind of drill into those sidewalk stories, maybe just one story Mm -hmm. per episode to encourage you guys. Maybe it's a, a victory. Maybe it's a challenge that one of our fe- our teams faced. And so we're going to start with a story, and then uh, the next segment is going to be the training segment. So we're going to just introduce some kind of training component, something that maybe we learned from the story, or, mm-hmm. or maybe you guys mm-hmm. could learn from the story that we're going to share. And then we're going to get into really the subject that we're going to be covering. And so um, in this episode, actually, our last segment, the, the – um, the subject we're going to be covering is going to be dealing with undocumented immigrants at the abortion center. I've gotten this question a couple of times, like how right. do we handle that right. as sidewalk outreach teams? And so we're going to be talking about that. So without further ado, we're going to talk or we're going to share a story. And Vicki, you have a story to share that happened. Yeah. Um, give a little background. We actually did what we call a sidewalk intensive, sidewalk outreach intensive In Ontario, Oregon, Mm -hmm. which is just across the border from Idaho, our team that was in Idaho actually shifted focus because in Idaho, um, where they were at in Boise, which is where at that time before Roe v. Wade was overturned, about 75 percent of all abortions in Idaho happened at that abortion center where our team was doing sidewalk outreach and doing prayer walks. But Roe v. Wade, because of laws that were passed with uh, within the Idaho state legislature, um, they made it illegal to do abortions at the abortion clinics. Now, abortions still take place. People can still get the abortion pill. So abortion is not completely illegal in Idaho, practically speaking. But the clinics are no longer doing abortions. And Planned Parenthood, under the cover of darkness, because they do things in darkness, because right. they do dark things, right, yeah. um, opened a facility just across the border in Ontario, Oregon. And our team actually shifted their focus there and are doing sidewalk outreach. And our director, Angel, wanted us to come and do a sidewalk training to help train some of the people 
that were brand new to sidewalk outreach there and wanted to get involved in reaching out at the abortion centers there. So we were there in Ontario doing that training. And this story that you're about to share comes out of us in the midst of that training. Um, we had a small group of people, but they right. were all engaged and they were all excited about uh, learning and and being as effective as possible. So I'll let you take over just with the story that you wanted to share. Yeah. So there, there was one young man um, in his teens and um, listening intently to everything I was teaching. And his mom had let me know that um, he was pretty nervous. I, you know, no surprise. Uh, yeah. All the adults were nervous too. We're sure. all nervous on our first time out there. Um, but I was teaching the whole group how to pass out literature and, uh, I use a very specific technique. I think it's very effective where uh, hold up my hand, wave, make a stop sign with my hand to try and get the cars to slow down or stop for me. And then how I would hold um, the literature in my hand is very specific in, in um, making it more likely that they're going to take the literature from me. So I was demonstrating that. And then I called on the young man and said, uh, um, now you get to practice it. Yeah. And actually, surprisingly, there were no clients coming into the Planned Parenthood where we were training that day. So um, I I had someone be the actress who was going to be the mom, and the young man was going to give her this literature the way that I had taught him. Yeah. And he was so nervous. But, um, but he said, okay, I'm ready. Now, which hand should I hold the literature in, the right or the left? And I just was, you know, I, I I was just so taken by the seriousness with which he was watching every little yeah. detail. He wanted to get it exactly right. right. And I told him it really did not matter whichever hand was more comfortable for him to hand the literature with. And then he did it and he did, he did a great job. But um, but it 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 just struck me that that is the um the intent, the seriousness, the attention to detail, the desire to do it exactly right, all of that is what every sidewalk counselor needs. Yeah. We need to approach what we do with that kind of single-minded focus. Yeah. Yeah. And so this this story blends into our tip yeah. for the day. Well, l let me dig into the actual story is, yeah. to me at least, uh -huh. young people. Because right. we had a, you know, had a varied group, older people, young people. Yeah. When I say young people, I mean young teenagers. They were there training up, wanting to do sidewalk outreach. And to me, that's a story in itself that you've yeah. got young people there in Ontario, Oregon, this kind of small little, you know, obscure town there on the yeah. border of Idaho and Oregon. And yet God is raising up people young and old. Yeah. To be a witness and to be a voice for the voiceless there. Yeah. And so to springboard off of that, we're going to do just a little bit of a training component here so you can shift into that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I I keep picturing that young man and thinking how seriously he took it all. Yeah. And um, how it's so easy to be on the sidewalk and kind of forget what's happening there. Right. Um, especially if you've been doing it for a long time or you just become, I don't know, you just, I think you just forget. You, yeah. you just forget that, you know, a few hundred feet or less away from you, babies are being ripped apart limb by limb, starved, asphyxiated in the pill, dying a violent death at the hands or not the hands, but at least the permission of their own parents yeah. and how incredibly tragic and heavy and sad that is. But this young man reminded me, who have been out there a long time, he didn't say anything just by his whole demeanor and, and what he did. This is so important, yeah. what we do. And we need to remember that and to take it very seriously and pay attention to every detail and how we can glorify God to the tiniest little movement yeah. or word or thought, everything. He wanted to get it just right. Yeah, yeah. And I think that needs to be our attitude. Yeah, yeah. Do what we do as unto the Lord mm -hmm. with intentionality. Yeah. And so even as it pertains to handing out literature, yeah. many of you guys that are listening have handed out maybe hundreds of brochures at the abortion center, maybe 
you've done, you know, passed out tracks at different places and stuff like that and don't really think a whole lot about the technique of it. Right. But practically speaking, there's a bit of a technique to it. We actually did do an episode uh, probably two years ago or something about handing out literature and, and shared mm-hmm. with you guys the technique. But just to reiterate, uh, again, it's not rocket surgery. <laughs> it's uh, It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. But I do think being very intentional with having something in your hand, of course, like having the brochure in your hand. And only one because right. the you want them to take it. And if you're fumbling through a pile of literature in your hand, it's you're losing precious seconds that they might grab it. So, yeah. so one piece of literature in your hand, maybe yep. a belly pack where you keep the other ones or a back pocket or something. Yeah. Yeah. And so have that visible mm-hmm. and have it where they can see the hope is here mm-hmm. on the front of the brochure. So have it so they can see it almost like it's a sign that you're holding up, but it's not exactly right. a sign. And of course you guys can't see me cause this is audio, but also we'll put my hand up and sort of a waving stop motion. Right. Like, so I'm waving. Of course I'm smiling. I'm engaging with my eyes, making eye contact, smiling, waving again, kind of in a stop motion with the literature held up. And then when they stop, I'm going to turn it, um, horizontally, I guess, Correct. again, trying to be Turning descriptive. Turning it sideways instead of flat facing them straight up and down, which is harder to grip. This is one of the teeniest little yeah. things. But I tell you, it revolutionized how many people started taking literature from me. So you just shift it so that it's now horizontal and they can easily grasp it now yeah. Yeah. with their thumb and forefinger. And it's automatic. They will take it automatically. You don't need to say, please take my literature. Yeah. They will yeah. just open their hand and take it. Yeah. yeah. So there's a little training tip for you guys to yep. springboard off of that story. Yeah. Just amazing what God is doing there in Ontario, Oregon. Yeah. So guys, please pray for them and pray for God to continue to raise up a army of volunteers there. Yeah, And now, um, shifting into our main topic here, Vicki has an article, as she often does, that she wrote about this particular subject, how to deal with undocumented immigrants at the abortion center. Like, what are some of the things that you, um, maybe we'll get into some of the things that you say, don't say, some of the ways that you deal with these situations. So let's jump into this subject, Vicki. Yeah, so um, I encounter this all the time. It, it is very common. If yeah. it's common here in Charlotte, it's probably common throughout the country. But um, Yeah, I've actually gotten this question. I just talked to one of our directors the other day about this particular question. A couple of weeks before that, I talked to one of our uh, another one of our directors in California about this question. So it is an important question. Yeah. So just as a general background of what that is going to look like, someone who is here without documentation, they... Um, they can't access services that yeah. most poor or lower income women in America would be able to access. Yeah, like um, Medicaid. Like Medicaid, which is very critical because anyone can get pregnancy Medicaid, basically. you got to be pregnant, but other than that, um, but not not if you're undocumented. Right. Um, they're often poor. They often can't speak English well, if at all, and they're struggling. Yeah. They are struggling. So they they're... Their situation is pretty dire. Yeah, and a lot they're of times they're the, here all alone, right? They don't have a whole bunch of family that is here as well. Often, oftentimes they're here all alone, and they're thinking, "How can I possibly add another little yeah. baby um, to this mix?" And I'll say this too. Yeah, they also, and I've seen this often actually, are manipulated and lied to by the doctor that they went to saw went to see. Or, you know, wherever they they might have found out that they were pregnant at. Like yeah. I have talked to women, uh, especially Spanish speaking and uh, and families that have come to the abortion center because a doctor sent them there and they didn't even realize they were coming to an abortion center. Yeah. Which is like. Yeah. Terrible. Criminal. Of course. Criminal. So um, some of the things, first of all, to recognize whether they're here legally or not, because what I have found is the direct approach. Are you here legally? <laughs> Whatever, are you here illegally? Um, it, it scares them right off. Yeah. They're not going to talk with you. It's it's very, and it could be perceived obviously as very confrontive and yeah. um, and dangerous in their eyes. Dangerous. They're they're going to send me back. So um, most of the immigrants that that we face that I'm largely talking about are Hispanic, right? So, um, but there are some kind of telltale signs that I have seen over the years that that I've dealt with them. Um, so, uh, they seem nervous. 
they seem nervous to talk to us. Oftentimes they won't. Yeah. Um, but they, they're clearly scared. They're afraid we're going to report them. Right. If, if we find out that they're here illegally. Yeah. They often speak no English. Yeah. Or if they do speak English, it's very sparse. Yeah. Um, that's a tip off because maybe they just arrived right. in the country. Yeah. They haven't even had time to learn, to learn the language. Um, I will ask my roundabout way of finding out and asking something is saying, are you able to uh, get Medicaid? Yeah. And they'll say, no, no, they can't. Now, I never ask why. Okay. Um, on purpose. I'm still trying to just get them to talk to me yeah, at that point. Yeah, you want point. to try to earn their trust. I want to earn their trust. And I know if they know I suspect that they're undocumented, they're they're going to run away. Yeah. They're going to run right into the abortion center. Um, they are hesitant to give even their name or any information. And when I ask what the struggle is, this is what I ask every mom, what's the struggle that brought you here? Um, they seem to hedge the answer. They they won't they won't answer directly. Okay. Or they'll just shrug. Yeah. <laughs> and so those are all tips for me. Um, and here in Charlotte, we have a unique situation, which I am going to talk about because I think it could be developed in any community. But if I tell them that we have free medical care for them throughout their pregnancy. They light up and they start talking to each other in Spanish if, yeah. if they're there with other people. And I know that's because then, in all likelihood, that was a big concern that they could right. not get medical care yeah. while yeah. pregnant. So um, so those are kind of the signs. Those right. are some of them. I'm sure there's others. Sure. But yeah. those are the ones that I'm already thinking. Um, I this is someone who's undocumented. I remember talking with someone that met all these criteria that I was seeing all these things. And, um, and it, I could tell she was conflicted. I could tell she didn't want to go into that abortion center, but she still wouldn't, um, come aboard our mobile ultrasound unit. Yeah. And, um, and that's when I brought up the, um, our free medical clinic and, um, and not to worry I didn't care about anything other than helping her and her baby. Yeah. And at that point, she told there was a translator there, told the translator, I don't have papers. Yeah. And he, which he told me. And I said, we don't care. Yeah. We, we don't care. We yeah. just want to help you and your baby. Yeah. Well, so. l let me speak to sort of maybe the, I guess, moral perspective on this thing yeah and at least some of the questions that i've gotten because yeah. there are there are those who question like should we even be helping them right. because they're here illegally yeah like they've broken the law yeah and my first thing is well there's a baby's life who's on the line who didn't break the yeah. law the baby didn't has break the no line. idea right. what's going on and there's a higher law right right murder and murdering a child is far worse than crossing a border illegally and i will say that Yes, they're here illegally. What they did was wrong. Um, you don't have a country if you don't have borders. And so I'm not going to get into all of that because they shouldn't. But at the end of the day, like, do you really blame them for wanting to come to the best country on the face of the planet? Like, I don't blame them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not... oftentimes the stories that I hear, they are escaping just really yeah. not only horrific conditions, but really threats to yeah. their life yeah. and their family's life. And then I'll say, yeah. too, for the Christian who's like, you know, should we even be helping these people because they're here illegally and they're they're in immorality and probably sexual immorality right. as well. Yep. I mean, the same same. By that same token, it's like, should we be helping these moms who are pregnant outside of marriage? Right. Because they're Which is they're almost sinning. all of them. Yeah, yeah. They're sinning and, you know, we don't want to support them in their sin. I mean, of course, that'd be ridiculous, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, we help them because um, there's a baby's life who's on the line and they're human beings. And beyond that, there are people that pay a lot of money to get a plane ticket and fly to Mexico and um, witness to people on mission trips. Like, man, they're coming to us. Like, this is a witness. This is an opportunity to witness Jesus and the gospel to these women. So, yeah, we should help them. And yes, we should assure them that we're not going to turn them in to the authorities or whatever, because as soon as they think that you're going to, they're gone. And I'll tell you who who's not going to turn them in and they'll kill their baby for, you know, whatever money they can get out of them and then have yeah. some kind of subsidy from some organization to pay for the rest of the abortion, Planned Parenthood. Right. Like, they're... Yeah. They're going to definitely take their money and kill their child. Yeah. And so I think we have to balance our convictions with, with the situation, 
right? Yeah. There's a baby's life that weighs in the balance. So that's kind of a moral perspective. I can get more in depth with that, but yeah. I think you guys generally get where I'm co- I'm going with this. I'm glad you mentioned that because I did not bring that issue up um, in the article because I already kind of resolved it along those lines right. in in my own in my own heart. But so um, so one of our first counseling goals is to relieve their fear, so that they will they will trust us, and um, and so. Uh, listing the resources, and um, we have many that are specific to Spanish, imi- or, you know, Spanish-speaking immigrants. And um, as you, as soon as I start listing that help, they they usually are um, much less resistant yeah. to talking to me or coming on the mobile ultrasound. Yeah, um, <clears throat> there are some common issues. Um, most of the issues are the same of the issues that we deal with with any mom, right. with the important exception. That most of the moms we deal with can get Medicaid, yeah. pregnancy Medicaid. These women cannot. Right. So the challenges are the same. Right. But the availability of resources to meet those challenges is not. So right. like Medicaid, for example. But even with like housing and stuff like that, right? Because there are some housing organizations, some maternity homes and things that, you know, for whatever reason, they're, they can't take people who are here illegally. Now, there's some that are able to and some that are willing to. So it's good for you guys to try to figure out what are those housing resources, because just like a mother who is you know, born and raised here in the United States of America, housing is an issue for many of them. And that's one of the common things that we face. Right. Yep. People that are here illegally, even more so, housing is a challenge, is an issue. So it's good to have a list of housing resources for anybody and everybody, but it's also good to vet that list to figure out and ask them straight um, straight away, what do you do if someone's here illegally? We encounter people on the sidewalk who are here yep. illegally. How do you guys handle that? Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, because of their illegal status, they can't find work oftentimes. Um, so finding food and supplies uh, for yeah. their family are all issues. Yeah. So some of the solutions um, – I, I want to go into briefly. Again, you can find a lot more detail if you read the article that accompanies this podcast. But overwhelmingly, they believe in God. Most yeah. are Catholic from yeah, yeah, you know true. Latin American countries. They know that abortion is wrong, and so there is almost always a great deal of conflict yeah. in the Hispanic women that that I encounter, and um, almost always they are probably the easiest group. Oh, to yeah, convince no not to kill their baby, but never neglect the gospel. So that's right. that's kind of one of the main solutions. Never neglect the gospel yeah. because they they know they at least know believe in God. They may differ. Certainly, we do differ with them oftentimes on theology, but it is much easier to point them to the Lord. Yeah. And I'm going to give the gospel what I believe is the truth, the way it, it is written in the Bible. That's what I'm going to present. Yeah. And I have had many, many, many Hispanic oh, yeah. women give their life to the Lord because oh, they recognize. wide open to the gospel. Wide open. So offer the ultrasound always. They see that living person, their community as a people, they are pro-life. They yeah. know what they're about to do is wrong, which I think is very different from our country. Yeah. Um, resource is critically important. And if po- there there are churches that cater to a Hispanic population, they would be a good resource to know right. about. But one of the things we have here in Charlotte that I really wanted to mention, because I think any city could develop this, um, find a pro-life doctor. Um, we have one. He sees them once a month for free in a medical clinic and he does that with the cooperation of a local um, pregnancy resource center. Yeah. That could really happen in any community. Yeah. If if you can find the pregnancy resource center and the doctor that would be willing, I will tell you that is the single most um, like compelling thing I can offer them that makes them change their mind. Yeah. Because the medical issue is of such concern to them. Right. I can't get medical care um, during my pregnancy. Um, and, um, pointing out where they can save money in other areas, food pantries there. So having a list of food pantries, if you're saving on food, you're not, you're not going to, you know, it'll free yeah, it right. up for That's the money. other You're things. not spending on food that you can put into housing Correct. or, or medical Correct. care or whatever. If you're with Love Life, a Love Life mentor who hope, hopefully speaks, um, Spanish. Yeah. Um, and then one of the other questions I get all the time, how do you communicate with them? And honestly, I care so much and I see this so much that I have been 
teaching myself, well, not myself, I'm using a program to learn Spanish. It is enormously helpful. And I have focused on phrases that I can use at the abortion center. Okay. Not everyone, obviously, that's time consuming. I've been doing it in a year and a half, and I am able to convince them not to kill their baby with what I know already. But um, having um, good translating app, apps on your phone. Yeah. Um, Google Translate is not bad. I use That's Instant I use. Translate, yeah. um, which I like better. You got to pay for it for the the version that that is best. But something I also discovered recently, at least on an iPhone, if you're text messaging and you've written out the text message in English, and if you hold down on that text message, uh, um, an option comes up to translate it into, into okay. Spanish. Yeah. So that. you can, um, yeah, so you can you can talk using text message. Um, so and then we have a list of people. And actually, well, people that, that are willing to translate for us over yeah. the phone yeah. that we can call. Um, Somebody and, that you can, like a Spanish counselor that you can exactly. get on your phone and hand it yep. to the woman. Yep. That's helpful. Or, or because usually they are not trained counselors. What I do is I, I say, I'm going to put you on um, speaker and I'm going to tell you what to say. Could you translate this so that they're getting my experience counseling, but they're getting it in their language? Yeah. And then the counselor, the translator would tell me um, what the, the mom had said. And then having the Spanish literature yeah, written out in absolutely. Spanish, a Spanish Bible. Those are all good, good tips. Yeah. Um, and we're happy to answer questions uh, because we have had a lot of experience dealing yeah. with this. Yeah. So... So yeah, what what you said initially in 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 terms of um, settle for yourself. This is a baby who's going to die if I don't intercede, and if she runs away from me because I'm going to be mad at her about being here illegally, um, then that baby's probably more likely to die. And this is a baby that the likelihood of that baby being saved is pretty high. Yeah. If you can get them to talk right. with yeah. you, yeah. If they're if they're actually stopping and talking to you, yeah, the lots chances of, times. of them choosing life. Is pretty high for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, cool. We hope this was a blessing to you guys. Um, and again, give us some feedback on this uh, new format that we're trying. We're trying to just share some stories and share some training and then um, share on a subject like we did today a little more in depth. So let us know what you think about this. Give us some feedback on that or maybe future episodes that you'd like for us to do, subjects you'd like for us to cover. You can reach out to me, Daniel at lovelife.org. You can reach her, Vicky with a Y at lovelife.org. Also check out our podcast website, gospelcenteredprolife.com, where all of our episodes are. You can search those by keywords. If you have a particular subject, you wonder if we did an episode. My guess is we probably did, so check that out. And until next time, God bless. God bless you all. Give me an outlet for love. Give me an outlet for gratitude. Nothing's too precious since I met you.